So for those of you that might be just popping on, my name is Suzanne Hart. Welcome to Mindset Mastery. And what exactly is Mindset Mastery? This is the shifting of your thinking right? It is the, it's the reprogramming, if you will, of your thinking. We work at the inter, interconnection, the intersection of personal leadership, inclusive communication, and cultural competency. This is actually the best form of leadership you can imagine when you integrate all of that into what you do. So why is Mindset Mastery so powerful? Because we look at how your thoughts, communication, and emotions influence your behaviors and your actions. My goal is for you to powerfully make choices when faced with challenge, crisis, and change so that you can continue to get where you're going. So welcome. So let me introduce this gentleman sitting beside me. This is someone I have come to know, respect, and admire. He is the owner and founder, founder of Innovative Realty. Um, and he's been in real estate and in his profession for a number of years. What I found out on our last interview that he didn't share with anyone until we got on air is that Innovative Realty is ranked five in Canada and I think about 15 in the world. So we're gonna sit down and find out what it takes to create that level of success and what is the story that fuels innovative realty. So welcome, Mr. Sabir Chawala, how are you? Well, thank you, thank you very much, Suzanne. Hey, it's a, it's a pleasure and honor to always be your guest. Uh, and, and you know what, I'm so blessed to be on your show, to be interviewed by you, and uh, it's just phenomenal. I'm so thank you again, and yes, I'm doing phenomenal. When you when you called me and told me that you want me to be back again, I'm like, whoa, I'm glad <laughs> to be back again. <laughs> I did something right the first time around, and, you know, and, you and I'm so you blessed did. for that. I'm so blessed for that, but yeah, no, it's just phenomenal, and thank you for having me, Suzanne, absolutely. You are so welcome, and I, and I have to tell you, so after your interview, I got onto another call. The first five minutes of the call, people wow. were talking about your interview. And, and, and you know, the fact that we're doing storytelling tonight, you told a story uh, that I'm not gonna share right now, Clayton, we might touch on it again uh, mm -hmm. tonight, but you told us a story that touched people. And it was one of the first times, or one of the few times, I, sh I should say, that people weren't even commenting. It was like they were, they were glued to their screens and it was only at the end that people were like maybe i should say something and they began to send you love and thank yous and then they started to comment about how inspired they were how genuine you were thank you for being so vulnerable you did everything this interview is about so that is one of the reasons i wanted to have you back so let's jump into this conversation and uh you know, I, let me see who's out there first. I see Colette. Welcome, Colette. They're already sending us hearts. I love it. I see Joyce Swenson. Welcome, Joyce. I see Cindy is here. I see Taria, of course. Richard Wood has joined us. Welcome, Richard. My friend Don Jones is here. Welcome, welcome, Don. And I know there will be people that will continue to join us um, as we can, as we, as the discussion goes on. So. I think I want to start with um, the story behind Innovative Realty. And I know when we sat down, um, the story that you told me was not what I expected. <laughs> and if I want you to start with and share that bit with the audience, and then I'll jump in and ask you a few questions. Absolutely. Well, the story of Innovative, if, uh, we've been in business for just over 10 years so now. It's about 11 years now. Uh, and I've been in the real estate business for 12 years, uh, but the brokerage has been like 11 years. But I think it starts off with uh, the, the goal. Everything is, you have a goal, personal goal, relationship goal, business goal. And within 10 years, over the last three years, we have become the top five brokerage within Century 21 Canada. So that's from East to West Coast. So, you know, in Canada, we are number five. So we were like, I think number 27 
about five years ago. So you could say I'm top 30, you know, but then we dropped to, I think 20. So you couldn't say top, you could say top 20. I mean, you're still number 20, but if, then we dropped to 17 and then I think we were number seven. And then finally last three years became number five. It was like number five, you know, top five. Yeah. Wow. But, and then at the same time, we became number 15 globally. So Century 21 has about 7,000 brokerages all over the world. You know, whether it's in South America, Europe, uh, Asia, US and Canada, we became number 15. So how do they measure that number? That's the most important thing is, is number of transaction that your brokerage does. So we're, we're, a, we're a franchise. Mm-hmm. So every month end, so uh, August just ended on Monday. So just yesterday, we had to report all the numbers to the head office. Okay. So all the transactions get done, you report that. And then on a quarterly basis, they do the tallies of everybody and they say, hey, you did this much transaction, you did that much transaction. And based on transactions, so how much, we do transaction, my realtors do transaction, and how we are consistency in that. And it all started off with a vision, with a goal that we wanted to be number five. We want to be top five brokerages, you know, or top 10. And then we slowly scaled down. So it was that, you know, they say, uh, you know, persistent is doing the action day in and day out. But persistence is also your mindset. Ah, I love it. Persistent is your mindset. Just because you go to work and you figured I'm going to move some paper here and there and this and that and everything of that nature, that's really not really the doing action, not doing the right action. You know, my coach once told me that, uh, you know, I, I used to play basketball in the high school days and I used to play volleyball. But if you're not dribbling the ball right in basketball and if you're not throwing the ball right, so practice makes it perfect right however perfect practice makes you the lebron of the world you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> that's right. and that's what it was so even you're doing things and you're doing it persistent but if you don't have the right mindset of the persistent right mindset the right attitude you're not going to get too far you know you know that's that's a beautiful place to start because i've heard that you know we all know about the 10,000 hours right that you become an expert when you put in your 10,000 hours but the caveat to that is exactly what you're saying it's the 10,000 hours of of the right action right the perfect action but it's also the 10,000 hours of action that has you grow and expand and become so it's not doing the same thing for 10 years it's doing actions that have you evolving over those 10 years and I think when I read the quote, it said that if you've been doing the same action for 10 years, you've actually had one year of growth. And I thought, whoa. And that's kind of what you're, you're, you're talking about. I want to I wanna start with, because you talked about a goal and you talked about a vision and you talked about, you know, having your eyes on something. I think what I want to start with was, was when you first started, you didn't, you did not have the success. You, you, it didn't start off like gangbusters and we're going to the top and we're going to end up in the top 30. So talk a little bit about that. Let, let me take you back on a journey. Let's forget about the, the brokerage itself. Um, if I, if I make you share that with my, wow. with our viewers or listeners, you know, Suzanne, you know, until you haven't failed in life, you don't taste success. So to get this brokerage in Ontario, so we have Real Estate Council of Ontario, Regal, you have to do exams. You have to do exams. And there's uh, a total of six exams, but the first exam, pass the second one, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. So a guy like me, I failed 14 times just to get my real estate license. Wow. 14 times. So I did not taste success and got my real estate license like within six months, 18 months or something of that nature. I failed so many times, just that exam itself. Mm. And I was persistent and said, whatever it takes. And each time I would be so scared to log into your portfolio and say, okay, the results is coming out today. I'm afraid to check. Is it pass or failure? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, uh, uh, you know, married, I got kids and everything of that nature. 
Now, as a parent, as you can understand, imagine if you fail an exam and you have to go tell your son or your daughter and says, man, I failed again, son. Man, I failed again, daughter. Not just that, telling your wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a big thing, you know what I mean? So that was the biggest factor that I had. I failed 14 times in wow. just writing the exam. And what prevented, what prevented you from giving up? Because I know for a lot of people, and you know, for everyone lis listening, I know there's people out there that have probably failed and they're, they want to give up. So what prevented you from giving up? What prevented from not giving up was, I, you know what? I, I, I had invested in real estate before also, and I enjoyed investing in real estate. So I thought that why don't I basically learn the investments of real estate and maybe do it myself. And that's what I did. I said, um, I need to learn all these things. Why don't I learn all that? And I love real estate. I was already uh, uh, a salesperson in, um, you know, selling IT hardware and everything. But this gave me a real good thing, sense where it was more like individuals money, mm -hmm. your money. So if I work for corporate Canada, you know, it's not, your money, Suzanne would say, hey, I want to buy these computers for my office. It's the company's purchase or it's a company. But Suzanne says that, hey, I want to buy that house of your help me buy that house. It's your individual hard earned money. And that gives me the joy to help Suzanne and her husband, Suzanne and their family to get into it. Or Suzanne is living maybe in a rental apartment. The joy of getting her into a beautiful dream home. So helping people achieve their individual goal was what I enjoyed and that's what I thought that that's what I want to do and whatever it takes I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this license and it was this consistent persistency uh, but at the same time having the right attitude to say if I fail it's okay uh, but you know at that time I did not even know TGR I was not a, a student of think and grow rich I just had the attitude of I want to change in my life and mm -hmm. I, I already was a loser in a sense that I failed so many times. And I got to prove to my children and to myself that I can do it. Right? And, that, and that is so key because I think most people don't pay attention to how much, um, you know, I, 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 I joke and I say we carry our mind everywhere and our mind, and our mind knows who we are. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes when we quit, we're out of integrity. We don't do what our, we, we say. It, it, it affects our ability to trust ourselves and expect, it affects our self-worth. It expect, affects our belief in, self and, in ourselves. But when you keep going and you finally achieve, that is, it's almost like it builds your belief tank. In, in, it's like you put credit into your mind, your mind tank, your heart tank, your belief tank, and you take that with you. So it, it's, it's so key. So let me ask you what, you know, when you have failed that many times, how has that impacted your leadership in your brokerage, your, how you deal with the homeowners, the, what is, what has that done for you? It's actually a very good point you brought up. It's actually uh, made me a, a, a stronger person in the sense that I can see things differently. And I can relate and I said, you know what? It's okay. You failed. It's okay. You know what? You failed. I failed also. But relating a story like Edison hundreds of years ago, it's hard to relate to right now. But when you can relate to it and say, hey, I'm standing this flesh in front of you. I failed so many times. It's okay. And, and then that story becomes a little bit more easier to tell your colleagues, to tell your homeowners, to whether it's anything, your children, anything, you know, we all hear about stories of the failures of the Edison 10,000 times before you yeah, go yeah. the light bulb. Yes, but Edison was maybe a different beast and it's so many years ago. I want to relate mm -hmm. it today, 2020. Yeah, yeah. And, and also to relate to somebody I know. Yeah, he's there. He's there, fre flesh. I'm right in front of you. And you know what? If you don't believe me, let me show you. Like I show my, uh, some of my uh, colleagues, I said, let me log into Oria, which is Ontario Real Estate Association, which does the course. And I can show you all the failed courses. <laughs> that it's kind of bad to show you my marks and everything. But this is the true story. 
because mm -hmm. my student number will show you that has happened. So I Hi. think that's what's really helped me to relate to my realtors and say, um, if I can do it and if I fail, you can move forward also and you can make things happen. And, and I think the best thing right now, what has really turned out is my children. You've met my son. Uh, he just turned 26 on Monday. My daughter's 20. I, I relate to them and say, you know what? Uh, it's okay. We fail. Mm -hmm. But you don't learn something new unless you haven't failed. Yeah, absolutely. You don't learn something new unless you haven't failed. And if you haven't failed, you haven't learned something new. Mm -hmm. You know, you know this, this is beautiful because one of the reasons I wanted to do this is I love storytelling and, and we're, we're going to, we have a storytelling program that's going to be coming, coming in the next few weeks awesome. that, that we'll be teaching online. So stay tuned, everyone. And one of the beautiful things about story and why I like it is it makes you, when you and I share a story, drop a story, whether it be for an audience, whether it be for a client, it actually um, eliminates the distance between us because suddenly there's intimacy, suddenly there's relatability. And I, I always tell people that stories let people know your journey. It lets people know your heart, but it also lets people know your commitment. And so when you say that story, I'm thinking going, this is a real estate agent that's committed. He's not going to quit on me. And, and even, and if, and if I've been in struggle around finding a home or finding what I want, when you share that story with me, I'm going to say, okay, we can do this. And he's going to guide me through this process because he understands failure. He understands loss. He understands what it means to struggle. And suddenly we're, we're like kindred spirits now. I'm like, you're my, you're my agent. I was meant to work with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So true. And you're right. When you can, um, when you can relate to some people and when you can help them, uh, it really helps basically. And, and you uplift a lot of other families or uplift others. So that's really what we need to do as individuals at the end of the day. Absolutely. So as we, as we go on, if you can share, um, because I know for myself that my toughest lessons my most sometimes embarrassing lessons, mm -hmm. the lessons I don't want to share or don't want to talk about are the lessons that have actually built me, if you will. And they built a lot of my business philosophy. Talk about what were some of the lessons that have created your success? Like when you look back and you go, this happened and it taught me this this happened and taught me this and do you share that with your agents and your customers you know absolutely i mean um you know I, 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 as a realtor we're 100 percent commission right mm -hmm. and i show you houses i can drive you around around the city and everything that nature and then suzanne goes and buys a house from somebody else yeah i mean it's a dollar gas that's one thing my time is really valuable but suzanne didn't buy from me. She bought that house from somebody else. So I could be bitter and I could be screaming and yelling. I can do whatever I want. But what that taught me is a question I asked is, why did Suzanne not buy that house from me? Or why did Suzanne choose another realtor out of the 55,000 realtors? Right. Why? Maybe because my service level was low. My knowledge was not there. And it's happened to me already. Mm -hmm. It happened to me already when I was early in my career. When I was early in my career, I got my license and then there were people, they sign contract with you and say, hey, you're going to represent me, yet they go on and buy from somebody else. Anyways, the reason why they buy is I wasn't a knowledgeable realtor. I was not a competent realtor. So what that taught me is lesson is, why don't I elevate my level of competency, yeah. right? Yeah. Why do I elevate my knowledge, uh, my level of confidence, right? So maybe I lack something, and that's why Suzanne didn't do business with me. Yeah. So if I yeah. elevate myself instead of a complaining, why don't I elevate myself? You know, going back to what Napoleon Hill says, go that extra mile. Yeah. Provide valuable service than what you are rendering and you are getting paid for today. 
Mm -hmm. I can provide that high I want everybody to get this. I want everyone to get this. So provide valuable service more yes. than the money paid for yes. that service. Absolutely. Think about that. Now, if I provide that service to you, you ain't going anywhere, baby. You're sticking to me. Now you're sticking to me like glue, so you're gonna do business with me. That transaction is finished. Suzanne, if you meet John Smith tomorrow and says, John Smith says, Suzanne, I'm looking at buying a, a house I'd look and wanna sell. Which name are you gonna pop up on? The first thing on your mind is Sabir Chihuahua. Yeah. He rendered yeah. high level quality services for me. He went the extra mile. Now I might get, I, I might not, but I will definitely get referrals which is free of cost to me. Right. And that person that you're going to remind, refer me, you know, you're going to talk higher level about me because of the service and he or she will give me business at the same time. Right. The biggest challenge we have as an entrepreneur is finding clients. Right. Today's business entrepreneurial world, Coke sells everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. But yet Coca-Cola still advertises. Everywhere. They don't need to advertise. You can think about it. Yeah. Everywhere you go, whether you go into South Africa or Africa, Europe, Asia, you'll find a Coke bottle and they still advertise. They don't need to mm -hmm. because they continue to do that. So if you can find a client without advertising by providing that high level of service, as an entrepreneur, that's all. So that's what I learned. I learned early in my career because I lost clients and I lost business. I lost, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars of commission. Wow! Because I wasn't providing that high level of service. I wasn't confident. I was not competent. Mm. That taught me the lesson that let me go back. You know, I'll share a story with you, Suzanne. You know, my name Sabir Chawala is not a Canadian name. Yeah, again. You're laughing at that, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, true story is if you ask me to stand in front of a crowd and, and talk or come to your house and do a listing presentation, I was very nervous. Mm. I'm Indian, I don't have a Canadian name, and then I'm going to somebody's house to do this presentation. I was very nervous. Sam. But I took it upon myself. And said, let me learn the skills of, you know, communication, presentation. When I get that communication and presentation skills, you know what? My level of confidence now rises. Yeah. Now, when I come to your house and sit down at the dinner table with you and your husband and your spouse, I got that level of communication now. Because I, I went back to and I did Toastmasters. I did training. Mm -hmm. So that failure of losing clients taught me that I need to maybe go back instead of bickering instead of saying why she did this to me why that why don't you learn the lesson and say maybe she did not do business with me because of certain reasons now this is this is really good this is really good and and for everyone this is a this is a golden one mm -hmm. so one of the principles in mindset mastery is a hundred percent responsibility for everything good bad indifferent high low up down and, and to take it a, a, a step further even if you believe it is someone else's fault you still take a hundred percent responsibility now the beauty in that is when you take a hundred percent responsibility it puts it moves you from victim to 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 driver if you will to hero to whatever it is and it puts you at cause to change in your world. You're not waiting for someone to change because when you say it's their fault, they didn't do this. Now you're, you're playing the waiting game for someone else to show up to give you a better situation. When you sit in 100% responsibility, as Sabir is saying, you're gonna say, okay, let me examine what happened and what can I do to up-level my game so this does not occur again. And, and if you just get in the habit of doing that, no matter what, like for me, I, anyone who knows me, like Suzanne's like, it's, I'm 100% I'm responsible. So let me figure it, figure it out, right? It doesn't mean I have to do it, but I need to, I need to be in, in search of answers and I need to be, if, I, if, if change, change is gonna come from me, 
this. I'm going to initiate change. That's so huge. And, and so, so when you look at it like that, Sabir, there's never failure. There's only lessons. That, that's true. You know what? There's only lessons. There's no failure. You know, it's winning or learning. Winning or no losing. There's no losing. There's no winning or losing. It's you learn from it. Mm -hmm. Why did we not win that game? Why did I not win that transaction? And, and you learn from it. And that's how you grow your business. That's how you grow as an individual. Everybody on this call, listen right now, we're all entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And every day should be a day where you learn something new in so, your business. So you brought, you brought another question. So five in Canada, 15 in the world. Yes. The tendency for most people at this time is to coast. All is good. We've hit our goal. We're golden. What do you do with your team to keep them moving, to keep them sharp, to keep them growing? What do you do with yourself? You know, that's a very good point. And I believe in discipline. I believe in self-learning and, you know, mentoring. You should always, everybody needs a mentor. Amen. The great one. God bless him to the highest level, Kobe Bryant. You know, even afterwards, he still went back to mentoring. He still needed a mentor. So everybody should have a mentor, not just when you're at the peak level or you've achieved your goal. You need to consistently have that. So personal development, Suzanne, is what you need to have. And life should be about changing your goals. Okay. You set one goals today. You achieved it in a month, in a quarter, six months. Well, now get another goal going. Whatever it is, life should be basically evolving and you should have some goals to get you going. If you don't, man, what's the difference between you and the guy in the cemetery? Mm -hmm. The gal in the cemetery. That's right. Because no? the reality is, and, and for everyone listening, if you're not growing, you're not standing still. That's you are, you're, you're, you're dying. In, in, and and we, can die, we can be still fully alive and die here. Yes. We can die here in our heart. Yes. We can die in, in our, in our um, health, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And how many people are, you're, they're declining and they, they know they're declining, but they haven't taken on um, learning. And so you, and you're speaking to all the principles that make up Mindset Mastery. So another one is lifelong learning. And it's the ongoing pursuit of knowledge in every single area of your life, which keeps you in this place of in pursuit of excellence. Wow. Yes. You know, you know, studies have shown that to, to, to fight Alzheimer, your brain should always be working. Yeah. Learning. So even if you're at an old age, keep yourself busy. That's right. And we're young. We're in a generation. We've got that. Might as well learn new ways. You know, if you keep your business the same way, ain't going to learn that. Yeah. Your business is not going to grow. You know, uh, it's like, online shopping now with this pandemic you order it it's like your doorstep i uh our you know um i think there was basically our google um uh i think one of our our, our something basically that wasn't working in uh the internet uh, modem and my mm -hmm. daughter just ordered i said okay we go to best buy she said nah dad here i'll just order and it was at home yeah you know and, and that's it basically so little things of that nature it's like order online but maybe five, 10 years ago, it would have been different, right? right? So all this online shopping, all these things, things have changed basically. And, 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 and now you're, you're coming to a really good point because I think, I think the other part that you're talking about is, is the need for us to be innovative, right? To be, to be um, evolving. Because I know there's so much resistance to uh, social media. There's so much resistance to online this and online that and there are people that are saying that's not for me but from a business perspective you for me it's like it doesn't matter if it's for me or not and and you know people who know me know that social media not my thing <laughs> right exactly but it's become my thing why because it's necessary given what i do and so what you're also taught speaking to is stepping into the things we don't necessarily want to because it's necessary for our continued growth and development. 
Yes. And, and you know, change is inevitable. Change is kind of messy, ugly. But oh once you get used to it, it's beautiful. Right? Isn't it? Isn't it? Don't you find, um, and, I, and you know, I've gotten to know you. So don't you find, I know for myself that if I'm not growing, life gets boring. Uh -huh. If I don't have that little bit of edge where I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable, I'm, I'm growing, I'm expanding, life gets dull and boring. And so I think like anything else, growth is a muscle. It's, it's, it's something that we, we build so we get comfortable in this space of growth. Absolutely. And like you said, growth is like your muscle, right? I mean, you want to grow those muscles, you want to build into it, you got to do something about it, right? Yeah. It. And yeah. it's going to be a little tough. It's going to be ugly, but it's, it's beautiful. The results are beautiful at the end of the day. Absolutely. Wow. Well, I'm going to take a moment and, and let everyone know that uh, in preparation for Mr. Sabir, I, I created a, a note sheet uh, and it is, you know, certain things that, you know, you, you, if you were looking for, for what story you want to tell, if you were looking to say, okay, well, what, do, how do I pick a story? What are the lessons that I can pull out? We've created a note sheet for you. So if you put notes in the comments section, you will get, I, I like to call it a note sheet from tonight's slide that will give you some things that you can do because knowledge is only powerful if you do something with it. So we're gonna invite you to do something with it. So, so put notes in the comments section and then after the live, go to Messenger, complete whatever you need to do so you can, you can download that note sheet and totally do, do something with it. The other thing that you, you're gonna have an opportunity to do is if you put mastermind in the comments section, you will have an opportunity to have a mindset mastery moment with me, which is a 20 to 30 minute session where we can continue this talk conversation and we can talk about the power of storytelling, how you can find the lessons in your story, but more importantly, how you can use those lessons to actually build credibility and attract clients in your entrepreneurial business, in your, even if you're, if you're an employee and you wanna distinguish yourself um, in, in the space that you work, that is all available to you. So it's for master buying in there and that also gives you uh, access to the Mindset Mastery mini course. Um, so, we, you know, every time you show up, we always make sure we have a gift to thank you for just spending time with us and to also ensure that, knowledge, again, knowledge is power and making sure that we give you some tools to implement what we're talking about. So I want to I wanna talk about vulnerability and I want to talk about mentorship. And um, how has your lessons, your story affected your leadership and your ability to mentor? Like, so all the things you've learned, how do you use that to mentor and teach your team? You know, I think the biggest thing was um, basically you fail. So you personally learn. So when you personally learn, you teach that to others. Mentorship is, I've already been there been there and done it so mm -hmm. let me show you what i did you know and how i overcame like perfect example i mean i was afraid to make cold calling or prospecting to get new clients you have to do that we have to be out there uh i was afraid to go out to people's house and be at the dinner table and, and communication was not there i did it but i would not get the business because it would show that i'm not competent i'm not confident. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know my knowledge. So my failure has helped me to show my realtors what did I do to move me to the next level. Absolutely. Vulnerability. Yeah. Vulnerability is so important. I mean, you take any, any business, we're all vulnerable. You know, mm -hmm. we are human being vulnerable to change, you know. We're always scared to change. We're, we're comfortable with uh, being in a, uh, you know, comfort zone. So I did it. Suzanne, I was happy with making good money with corporate Canada. I used to work for Dell Computers and IBM. So when I told my wife and said, hey, I'm quitting and getting into this full time. Uh, my kids were still in school. My son was in high school and everything. Uh, you know, you don't know when your next paycheck is going to be as an entrepreneur. Yeah. 
but at least with corporate Canada, every Friday or every two weeks, you got a paycheck coming in. Absolutely. That's the comfort zone. Ah. The comfort oh. zone. Oh, somebody put comfort zone in the comment section. That is good. That is the comfort zone. That's a and it, How do you get it out keeps, of it? And it keeps people trapped, right? It keeps people in the limits. You're comfortable. Day in and day out, that's all you have to do. You're just going in there, tick, 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 log in, and you're out there by five, but you're not growing. As an entrepreneur, you want to grow. You're not going to be the next level you want to get to financially, leadership, mentorship, you know, business, um, mm. everything. You're not growing. You're just going to be that, uh, like a machine all day in and day out. That's all they tell you to do. And you do that. Ask you to do more. Great. But you're just a machine and, and entrepreneurs, you want to get to that financial level, right? I want to make more money Absolutely. because when you become a financially sky's the limit and changes have to come. So vulnerability is very important until you don't get out of that comfort zone and you're not vulnerable to take that risk you're not going to taste success you're not going to taste success you're not going to taste that greatness basically that's out there you know and that's mm -hmm. what i said i want to taste that i want to be that entrepreneur uh i mean i had no clue that i would have a a brokerage and get to number five top 15 in the world that goal wasn't there i just wanted to basically be comfortable but then when you become that and then you grow yourself, you see the opportunity in the business. Spectrums open up, different things open up. And, you know, I believe in the law of attraction. When you have the right attitude, right mindset, right people will come into your life, right opportunities will come into your life. But when you're just not there, an entrepreneur, even if an elephant walked by you, <laughs> you're not going to know about it, right? That was that elephant that just walked by. That was a great big opportunity. But because you were just sitting in that little cube over there, you missed that opportunity. And, and you know, what's, what's nice about what you're sharing is that um, it's, it's, a, it's a compounded effect of goal setting. So you started with, you know what, I want to I wanna get into real estate. And I'm sure when you went home and, and said to your wife, I'm quitting my job, or I'm getting into real estate, that was a conversation. But then you get there, you, you, and, and I love it, you, you take the exam 14 times, then you get your license and then you go to work. Now you're totally uncomfortable. So you grow into the skills, the, the attitude, the competency, uh, the confidence. And then from there, and this is what I want people to get. Once you step outside and you grow, it's amazing how other opportunities open up. Right. And then you go, okay, well, let me go for the next thing. So the next thing might be, um, I'm going to open a brokerage. And so you open a brokerage and again, you probably start like, let's just, let's just get this going and, and, and make money. And then you get there and then you're like, let's go to the top, whatever. And so I love the progression of it. And I really want to highlight that because it's not like you went from zero to this is where I'm going. You went from zero to let me get started. Let me grow a little bit. Let me grow a next bit. And it's, and it's, it's the evolution. But I think the key thing is you started. I hope everybody's getting this. You started. Yes. The other thing I really want to highlight and, um, and I want you to speak to is there's one thing that's so beautiful about vulnerability and sharing your story and sharing what happened. Because I know that the people that I follow, the leaders that I follow are the leaders who set, who tell me about the example. They show me that they're the example. And I know when I, when I, when I spoke to you, um, we, were, we were booking a call and you said, no, I, I'm, I'm going to be diet. I'm going to be making my calls from nine till whatever. Yeah, and I me. thought, here's the owner. It's 10 years later and he still got his time set aside and he's going to go in. You were, so you were going to, I'm going to go make my calls. And you were doing your regular 90 minutes, two hours of just getting on the phone and making your calls. And, and so, you know, it's, it's that modeling that is so powerful because we follow, admire, and stay with people who show up like what they tell us to do. That is true leadership. And one of the things when I, you know, no matter when I've met you, you are modeling to your people what you what needs to happen absolutely and you're going back to those calls 
I tell my realtors, you got to pick up the phone. You know, your, your greatest companion is, is not your spouse at home, but it is the cell phone. <laughs> Especially now with the cell phone, you can call clients, customers, past clients, uh, whatever it is, pick up that phone and make those yeah. phone calls. Yeah. You've got the technology. You don't have to go and knock on people's doors or anything. Like that. You can do it. And, and you said it perfectly well. I, I tell my realtors to do it so they can succeed. But I also do it. And a lot of time now what we're doing is we have a, uh, if I may call it like a boot camp, where I do it and they sit there and watch me doing it. Because the biggest thing is, what am I going to say when somebody answers the phone? Yeah, absolutely. Well, if, I, if I have a script, if I can tell you that the script is, and you use that script, and nine out of ten, it's always the same question, the same script, that's it. You know, you know, my, my mentor and I go back and he says, um, let's take George Clooney. I'm sure all the ladies on the call yeah. know him, uh, Tom Cruise. These guys make millions of dollars. However, the director probably tells him, okay, George, tomorrow, this is your script. Memorize it and come to the set, get ready. Yeah. yeah. And he makes his millions. So what if I can say, here's your script, come in tomorrow at 9 to 11, we're going to dial phone number and this is exactly what you're going to say hello susan this is a bit from 1021 would you like to sell your house no nope. move on next one hello so and so and you have that script and you can succeed with it so we've seen the great ones do it why are we not doing it Absolutely. you know i learned something suzanne is that people make business and life complicated yet it's simple if you follow the rules and a system in place. Oh, you, you know, now, now you're what, like, you're speaking my words. Everybody, yeah, your you, words, okay, there you go. Works with me, they're like, okay, Suzanne, that, that's, that's Suzanne. Okay. Um, follow the system. There you go. So, so one of the things that I, and I, I want to close with this question. Um, so I remember a few years ago, we were talking and you, and you were just getting into speaking. You were just starting to speak. And, and, you know, and I know there's probably people listening and going, well, he's a real estate broker. He owns a real estate broker. He's a real estate agent. Why is speaking so important? So can you share with everyone why that is, that is so key from a business perspective? Why do you want to take a stage and speak? You know, so, so, so business is something else. Going back to personal, it's a gold again. Okay. I love training. I enjoy training people, so training. And now what I wanna do is speak in front of the crowd and teach others or, or share my stories and say, you fail, look at me, man. I fail even worse than you. So to tell my story, I think, I needed to get that public speaking skills. You know, uh, the biggest fear is death. The second biggest fear is public speaking right so if i can understand and speak in front of thousands that's my goal right now i want to speak in front of thousands of people and say hey i, I want to inspire motivate thousands of people so if you can take a hundred people and inspire out of that thousand of those hundred people i've done my job mm -hmm. you know and, and that's exactly what i want to do is it's a personal goal now yeah and, and it's not taking away my real estate business, which I still want to continue, which I'm passionate about helping people, but this would be helping thousands of others and say, it's okay if you fail. It's okay if you fell down. It's okay if your relationship with your husband and wife is not working out. There's still great days out there. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, and you know what's really cool about this? So I, I have recently engaged a client. What's, what's interesting about this is, and this is where I really want entrepreneurs to get the power of speaking. Sure. So I engage a client, um, but how we get connected is I spoke in Toronto whew, five years ago. His wife was in the audience. Uh -huh. His wife went home and said, I saw this woman and oh my gosh, I just loved her. She impressed me, blah, 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 blah. And he says, what's her name? She says, it's Suzanne Hart. He Googles Suzanne Hart and picks up the phone and calls me and tells me, my wife saw you speak. She's so excited. I want to meet you. 
we end up meeting. We end up, you know, just developing a, a, a connection, a relationship. Sure. Now he's a client. And this is the thing I want everyone listening to get about speaking and storytelling. And this is kind of where I think you're going is that people buy us first and foremost. When you get on the stage and you tell your story, if someone connects with you and they buy you and they buy your heart and they buy the person that you are, business is the next natural step because I know you, I like you, I trust you. I bought your, I bought you as a person. Now I'm ready to do the next transaction. And and what it does is, for me, what I've learned is it turns a lot of cold, so so-called cold markets, yes. into warm markets. And people come up to me and tell me they know me, and I'm like, "Have we met?" Oh yeah, you were on stage. Wow. Interesting. Right. Wow. Let's see, yeah, and, and you know what? It goes back to the law of attractions again. It's like it opens up new avenues for you. So this thought just came in. You and I met two years ago, I think. And that's how that whole thing came in. I'm like, if she can do it, not that I want to do it uh, or I'm better than her. No, that, that, that ego was never there. It's, it's, it's just that you, you inspired me. I'm like, why can I not do it, inspire others? And I'm already doing it at a smaller scale. Now, why don't we do it at a bigger scale? Right. And this, and this is a beautiful thing. Now I met Sabir at the end of that day. I had spoken that day, we connected, someone had introduced us. I don't know the impact on Sabir yes. until probably another year later. That is the power of speaking. Uh, I end up speaking for one of his events, um, but that's the power of speaking is, is that you get to touch people that you don't know that you're touching and, you, and your circle advances and expands um, and, and it could be happening in a heartbeat. It, for, it happened in 45 minutes. That's how much time I spent on stage. Yes. And the, here's the connection. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. That's sort of it. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, I, I love sitting down and chatting with you. One is because um, one is you're, you're, you're brilliant. Um, you're, uh, you're, you're hardworking you, and you, you exude the things that I think all entrepreneurs want to learn and master. Um, but I think the other thing is you're just generous in spirit, right? Thank you. And, thank you. and so I just wanted to say thank you for that. And thank you for just being willing to share and be vulnerable and just speak, speak your truth to, to the audience. Appreciate it. Always here to help and make a difference in uh, other people's lives. And that's really the motto is, you know, Zig Ziglar said it so well, if you can help other people achieve their goals, you will achieve your goal one day. Right? Awesome, thank and you. That's so beautiful by Zig Ziglar, God bless his soul to the highest level. And that's exactly what it is, absolutely. Oh, thank you, thank you. So let me, let me look at the comments that, are, that have been flowing. Sure. So um, I, I saw someone put that your last interview and they have flames. It was fire. It was so good. Um, <laughs> uh, Joyce Swenson says, yes, I'm going to have to buy a house in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto, Toronto, Ontario. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Another post says, provide valuable service more than the money paid. Yes. Um, the, uh, that's you know vulnerability needs to, you need to get out of your comfort zone was another one that people took away mm -hmm. that's really good persistence is a mindset that was because remember a you've got to have that positive mindset every day in and day out yeah. you know we're gonna have those days where i don't know negativity or someone pulling you situation life circumstances and everything uh but Man, it's one of the biggest powerful, I don't know, two pound or not even a pound of ounce. But if you don't use it in the right way, man, we're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. It could, you, what's, what's between your ears can move you forward or it can move you backwards, but it's moving you somewhere. Absolutely. Right? And, and, and you, know, I, you know, I used to think that I was standing still, but then I realized, no, I'm either moving forward or I'm gradually moving backwards, which is a very, very scary thought. 
It's Kater's fault. Oh, it is. It is. Okay, everyone. Well, Sabir, thank you so much. We have been sitting down with Mr. Sabir Chawala, uh, owner of Innovative Realty out of Toronto. If someone wanted to connect with you, Sabir, how do they do that? Because, you know, we got someone who wants to buy a house in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess you can Google me and my, my website is there also. My email is there, sabir.chawala at century21.ca. Uh, and my last name is C-H-A-W-A-L-A. So first name dot last name. Um, you can Google me. I'm all over there uh, helping clients in the Toronto, Ontario region. But uh, definitely... Uh, if you want to connect with me via email, uh, my cell number, if you don't mind me sharing that, uh, uh, Sharon, uh, Suzanne, sorry, is 416-878-1684. Uh, if you have any questions, you want to talk to me, um, if you're going through some rough times in life uh, or you've just tasted failure and you don't know what to do, hey, I would gladly love to have a discussion with you. I'd gladly like to help you. If you're an entrepreneur and having some challenges and not so sure what you need to do, please reach out to me. We can definitely talk uh, and show you some of the challenges that I've had and what I've done to overcome. And, you know, and Suzanne knows some of the things that I do, the daily rituals, gladly mm -hmm. share that with people at the same time. Whatever I have, I definitely share that with uh, the audiences. Uh, so please reach out to me. I'm gladly there to help as many people we can. And, make the world a better place that i love it thank you so much all right everyone we have been to the topic tonight was are you are you ready to be vulnerable and share your story i truly believe that we all have a story to tell um thank you so much for joining us our we will be back here next week thursday 7 p.m eastern standards time we're going to be sharing another story of another brilliant entrepreneur this is a dynamic young woman out of montreal so you definitely want to join join us we're going to talk about how a young person finds their voice in the marketplace and we're going to explore the story of of that so remember we have a note sheet for you so all you gotta do is put notes in the comment section and that will be delivered to you in messenger My mastermind in the comment section if you want to book a 20-minute session uh, mindset mastery moment with suzanne hart or you want to register for the Mindset Mastery mini course, put mastermind in the comments section. Again, go over to Messenger, complete that. The information is also at the top of this invitation. Everyone, please know that you are brilliant. You are oh so special and the world is waiting for your unique gift. Blessings, take care, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you again, Suzanne. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank you, my care. Bye now.